Today we got Las Vegas Raiders defensive end Max Crosby. Max, man, what's going on? How you living? Happy to have you on. What's up, man? Thanks for having me on, fine, man. I appreciate it. Man, you are one of a few select members that actually has a unique experience of being an Oakland Raider and also a Las Vegas Raider. Go ahead and talk to me about how it was living and playing in the Bay Area versus now living and playing in Sin City and in a pandemic. Yeah, you know, my first year, you know, getting to live in Oakland and experience that whole environment and fan base, uh, it was surreal, to be honest. You know, that old stadium, a lot of people, yeah. you know, have their negative things to say, but, you know, I wouldn't take any of that back for anything. You know, that that whole experience in my first year was so much fun and um, getting to embrace the city and just seeing what Oakland was really about. So um, that was amazing. And, you know, obviously being in Las Vegas now, um, okay. we're super excited. You know, everybody's fired up. You know, clearly we want to have fans in the stadium, you know, to really get that full effect. But, you know, we just got to gotta wait it out and, and see how everything goes. Man, I'll tell you this. You're a better man than me because I'm not sure if I would have lasted being a Las Vegas Raider just because uh, <laughs> I've had many uh, I've had many experiences in Vegas, something I can't really say on air like this. But, uh, <laughs> but living and playing out there, man, that would definitely be an experience. So I'm definitely jealous of you guys. Uh, for now, basically living out that dream that so many players have probably wished that they could have uh, that they could have done. Yeah, definitely. You know, Vegas is uh, it's it's one of a kind. You know, I, mm -hmm. moving to Vegas, I really didn't know what to expect. Like everyone was saying, you know, obviously they talk about the strip and blah blah. blah yeah. Got to be careful and all this. And you know, obviously there's you know that part of it, but majority of Vegas is you know like Henderson and all that, and yeah. it's super quiet and chill. And like my neighborhood's super quiet, so. Um, I love it out here. You know, the weather's great and, you know, the people have embraced us, you know, right off the bat. Great. Max, now, since 1982, you're the fifth player drafted third round or later to register double-digit sacks as a rookie. And then you backdoor with seven more this past season, 2020. Coming into the league, being able to hit the ground running, you see guys like Nick Bosa, Chase Young, they had Pro Bowl seasons as rookies, respectively, but didn't hit double-digit sacks. Go ahead and talk about how you were able to hit the ground running early on and then go ahead and backdoor it with a good second season as well. Yeah, you know, th there's a lot of factors that tie in, to, you know, just coming in the NFL and, um, you know, gaining that confidence to go out there and play at the highest of my ability. Um, you know, coming from Exos, you know, training for the combine and everything, they got us in such good shape. Um, once I got into the building, I was already, you know, a little, you know, a step ahead. So I felt really good. I just had to put some weight on um, and get ready. But, you know, the NFL game is it's a lot different than college. You know, that your responsibilities are, you know, your responsibilities, your expectations, you know, all that is, 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 you know, much higher. So, you know, me being a fourth round pick, you know, no matter what, I still hold myself to such a high standard that, you know, it doesn't matter where I was picked. I still expect to be a starter. I expect to produce at a high level. So, you know, I apologize. The dog. Oh, no, it's all out. good. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, just coming in, I, I knew what I could do. Um, I just had to prove to myself, you know, by working super hard and getting ready for the season. And once my opportunity, you know, came about, you know, I just had to capitalize, and that's you know pretty much how it went. Man, I love to hear that. And especially the part about how in the, in this league is so much about opportunity because it may not come a second time. And when you finally get it, you have to definitely go ahead and take advantage of it. So speaking of which, going to the next step in this league so far, you've only been in the league two years. Give me the toughest tackles you've had to go against. Yeah, you know, that's a tough question. There's so many, you know, talented tackles. It's a it's a week-to-week -week basis, you know. It's not like college where you got – you know who you're playing. You're like, okay, this is going to be one of them games. You just mm – -hmm. you know, the NFL, 16 weeks, you know you're going to get the best of the best. So, yeah. for me, you know, guys like Laramie Tunsil and Taylor Lewan and, you know, David Bakhtiari, those are some of the names that come, you know, right off the bat. Um, you know, Garrett Bowles for Denver, I really like playing against him. Uh, me and him, you know, we have a lot of respect for each other. And, you know, on the field, we – we have a lot of tension, but, you know, after the game, it's all love. So going against a guy like that who has a similar mindset and is trying to finish plays um, and, you know, is a chippy type of, you know, type of dude. So for me, you know, anybody that's going to, you know, bring the best out of me, and, you know, go at me from start to finish, you know, that's that's what I embrace and look forward to. All right. One thing I always want to ask people, because I know I've had mine, whether it was on the field or off the field, it really doesn't much matter. 
tell me what has been your hello rookie welcome to the NFL moment, whether it was during a game, in practice, off, off the field, while you're at the grocery store sometime or something like that. What's been your most bizarre or should I say most memorable hello rookie moment? Yeah, you know, for me, it's pretty easy. You know, I, uh, I came into camp and I got to line up against Trent Brown uh, right off the bat. So I was, you know, 255 pounds at the time and I'm going into OTAs and I don't even have pads on. So I'm not, you know, naturally, I'm not a weight room guy. So in pads, I can't be as physical. And I see this dude and I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to be this dude? He's big as a house. So for me, you know, a lot of people in one-on-ones, they didn't want to go against him. So I was like, screw it. Like, I'm trying to prove myself. Mm -hmm. I was a third string, you know, off the bat. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go against him every day. Um, And, you know, he made me a lot better for sure. I like it. I still remember my hello rookie moment. 2005 here we are I get drafted late April second round and a week later we got mini camp and I'm lined up on Randy Moss and that's somebody that I grew up watching ever since I was a freshman in high school and here I am eight years later I'm lined up on it so uh that probably was my most memorable hello rookie moment was seeing him the very first week that I'm actually out there as an Oakland Raider so man I definitely remember those days and I think that hello rookie moment it makes you it makes you better because, you know, what don't oh. kill you always make you stronger, man. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> All right. Now, going into another subject. I know you see what happened with uh, Vincent Jackson, somebody that I played with for many years when he was a San Diego Charger and even a, a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. And we see the reports coming out about how he possibly could have suffered from CTE, things like that. For you, playing high school, college mm-hmm. ball, now playing in the NFL, seeing exactly the safety issue, seeing exactly the head traumas and all of the pitfalls that can come with playing in this great game that we all love. What advice would you have for one day when you have kids or if you're talking to young youngsters coming up right now, they may ask you your thoughts on the safety within the game of football and things like that. Yeah, you know, safety is is the number one thing, you know, in life. You know, your health is everything. So, um, you know, being a being a kid who started playing football in second grade, I was playing, you know, full speed, uh, full pads from day one. So um, I knew the risk that came with it. You know, I've seen when I even in Pee Wee, I've seen kids get knocked out and things along that, you know, along those lines. But for me, you know, I just I personally, you know, I look at it as you know, it's a high risk, high reward in a way, you know, there's obviously there's going to be people who suffer, you know, there's, it's, you know, been documented and, um, you know, it's obviously, it's horrible to see. Um, but we, you know, what you sign up for, um, yes. at the end of the day. And, you know, just like me, I'm, I'm 23 years old and, you know, I've had some collisions where I'm like, damn, like your, your head's ringing. But, um, I think just being educated and being, you know, not playing, reckless you know putting your head down throwing your head you know in piles things of that nature you know is key because early on in college you know I was trying to spear people 100 miles an hour just Mm -hmm. to you know try to prove a point but you got to be smart you know it's it's a high contact physical game but just like if you're signing up for MMA you know you're going to get hit in the head it's you know it's obviously going to happen but you know being educated and you know reducing the risk of of injury and, and and you know obviously mental you know not putting your head in in certain situations where you know you can be at high risk is is super key yeah I think that uh you pretty much hit it right on the head I think for most players we all know we're signing up for and just like what you said the risk versus the reward and for so many of us being able to play football obviously is a game that we love but it also has gives us the opportunity to generate not wealth but lineage changing wealth, generational wealth. And I think that when most players factor that in, they're willing to accept the risks that come with it simply because they knew what it was all along. But that high reward is worth that high risk is uh is usually what I tell most people. But nonetheless, like I said, thank God that I played corner. So we weren't always in the trenches like uh, like guys like you that are banging every play. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, it's a uh... You know, playing defensive end, I, you know, it's a position where it's close contact and we're not flying like a safety, hitting a receiver, not looking, you know. So you see kind of everything in front of you. So for me, you know, playing defensive end, it makes you really use your technique and you use your hands. And um, I like being able to see everything that's going on. You know, some 
I, got, I give credit to some of these receivers who are running post routes and getting <laughs> Stand off their feet because that's uh, that's a scary place, no doubt. <laughs> Very much, man. <laughs> okay, you and I both know how strong Raider Nation is intimately. The fan base. Okay. Very passionate. They're going to always ride for you. Sometimes you don't have a good game. Sometimes team isn't playing well. They also do not shy away from giving their opinions. I'm pretty sure that uh, that you've experienced that as well. When you see what happened with Cam Newton the other day, and the high school kid heckling him, things like that. What are your thoughts on that, just in its entirety of how fans will pretty much say whatever they want to say to players? Yeah, you know, I, I learned that lesson early on. You know, going into my rookie year, um, it felt like I couldn't do anything wrong just because nobody really had expectations for me. Um, so when I just did, made a play, they're like, oh, blah, 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 steal the draft. And then, you know, I kept going. Like, it feels like, it felt like every single comment was super positive and everything was great. And, you know, going into my second year with those higher expectations, you know, if I don't get a sack one game, it's like, oh, he's overrated, blah, blah, blah. He's not even that good. I'll, you know, you hear all the crazy stuff. You have people messaging my girl and messaging me like crazy, reckless stuff. But, um, I, you know, you get used to it. You know, it's a part of the game. And, you know, if they're not talking about you, um, I think that's more of an issue. You know, if they're – if they're locking in and worried about you and hating on you and loving on you, you know, that's, that's, you know, a good problem to have. So I, I understand, you know, seeing the Cam Newton thing, it's like Cam Newton's an MVP and the guy's made over a hundred million and a kid is coming up trying to diss him saying you're poor because he's, you know, on the later end of his career. But at the end of the day, like anybody would wish to have that career, you know, that he had. So the outside noise is going to be there at all times. You just got to know how to manage it. I love what you said about how anybody would love to have the career that he's had. And for me, going through all my years in Oakland, or whether it was Kansas City or for the Houston Texans, obviously you're going to have the naysayers. You're going to have the hecklers. That's something that's going to always be. And the way I've always looked at it is <clears throat> I think players, we can handle an objective criticism. Like if you have a bad game, you have an off game, you can handle that. Okay, yeah, I didn't get a sack last game. Or, okay, you know what, a receiver beat me on a touchdown. I can handle that because clearly they're just going off what their eyes told them. But I yeah. think that for players, whenever that objectivity is sprinkled with the extra hot sauce on it, he's a bum, he needs to not even be living on this planet, like he's a horrible human being, uh, they should have never signed him, they should have never drafted him. Whenever they start putting that extra hot sauce on it, to me, that's when you start to see the sprinkled in, the despite, the, uh, the spite, the hate, the jealousy, the envy, things like that. And just like what you hit it right on the head, and even with the media, um, I feel like so many people would have loved to have been NFL players. They would have loved to have been football players. So whenever they have a chance to criticize a certain guy who may have struck a nerve with them in some form or fashion, that's when they finally go ahead and try to unleash all of that ammo or all that bad blood that they've had because there's always been a certain level of jealousy or envy. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, I 100% agree, you know, from the media, you know, there's a lot of good guys in the media and they want to see you do well, but there's also guys who personally don't like you or like the, mm -hmm. you know, like the way you carry yourself. So every time something goes wrong or you, you know, get blocked on a play and whatever, they'll look for their opportunity. But when something good happens and you kill it and get a big sack or whatever, <laughs> score a touchdown, they just, you know, slide away. They don't oh, yeah. say anything. Brush it and off. And they just wait and wait for that opportunity. So you know, for me, the way I look at it, and that's how my, you know, my dad is a big influence as well. You know, just look at it. Like, you look at the best players of all time, LeBron and Michael Jordan and, you know, Joe Montana, Tom Brady, all those guys have the most haters on the planet. And that's for a reason. And people, once you win and you succeed to a certain level, you know, people are going to just want to see you fail because they're sick of seeing you do so well. So, you know, that's just a part of it. And, you know, you just got to take it with a grain of salt and keep moving. All right. Now, I love what you just said. <clears throat> Tell me exactly what your advice would be to a younger guy coming into this league in this 2021 draft coming up. What would you give to the younger guys? Even though I know you're still young yourself, but you might as well be a veteran because you've been starting ever since you got to uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. What would be your advice that you would give to the young guys coming in? Yeah, you know, for me, 
the main thing I've learned and what I'll tell, you know, every kid out here listening is find a middle ground, you know, be even keeled. You know, there's, there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs and you can't let your emotions take over your, you know, your mindset in a game. If one thing goes wrong, you know, you can't just be all down on yourself and let it affect you from the next play and on and a quarter. And, you know, you got to be in the middle, you know, and that's what I've learned. You know, when things aren't going exactly the way I want it, I just got to keep going, you know, and that's goes both ways. You know, when I'm succeeding and, you know, having, having big games and things like that, I can't let that, you know, be, that's all, you know, I, I have to have two, three sacks a game. Like, you know, for me, it's just about being the best version of me. Because at the end of the day, if you're trying to be like somebody else or try to chase something that isn't you, you know, you have no control of that. So for me, it's just like being the best version of me will give me a chance to be the best overall. So I just got to keep working on myself. And for every kid out there, you know, focus on yourself and work every single day to be a better version of yourself. Strong. Going forward, I already know what your team goals are. We all have the same ones. Would love to see the Las Vegas Raiders bring a championship to the Sin City uh, for everybody in the Bay as well. But for you personally, what are your goals going forward? Yeah, you know, for me, um, you know, like you said, obviously, our goals, you know, I, I don't like to talk about championships if we haven't made the playoffs yet. So for me, I'm trying to get in the playoffs and we start from there. So, you know, that's that's my mentality on that. But personally, you know, I want to be I know my potential and I know that I have a lot to work on at the same time. So for me, it's about right now, it's about getting healthy, 100 percent healthy, um, getting back into a conditioning that I know I can play 80, 90, doesn't matter how many downs and still play like it's the first play of the game. Um, so for me, I'm just trying to fine tune every little thing, you know, in my game that I lack at and continue to grow the things that I do well. So um, I got a lot of work to do. Um, there's always room for improvement no matter what. So I'm just working on get my body and get my, you know, my, my frame and everything to where I want it to be and staying healthy. Well, young buck, you definitely got the right mentality for it. I love everything you're saying right now. This league has definitely changed. It's not the same as it once was. Players now have a bigger voice. They have a bigger platform and a lot of players are using that. I'm pretty sure that you pay attention to sports, the news, things like that, just like I do. And you see with the Deshaun Watson of the world, now the Russell Wilsons of the world, you saw Matthew Stafford wanting to get traded out of Detroit. You now see quarterbacks. They're now starting to use their voice a whole lot more. And if they're not getting what they want from a said organization, they basically just make it known that they don't want to be there anymore. What are your thoughts now on players but namely also the quarterback position, having that platform and using it whenever they see something that they don't like within the organization. Yeah, you know, for me, when I initially saw the Deshaun Watson thing, and you know, obviously now Russell Wilson, it, you know, it's the day and age is a lot different and it does remind me of the NBA, you know, in a way, you know, once LeBron and those guys started speaking out, we're like, no, I want this guy on my team. I'll do anything to get, you know, matched up with this guy. So, you know, in a way, you know, obviously, you know, coaches do a great job in organizations and, you know, players want to be on the same page. You know, we're putting our body at risk um, and they want to succeed just like the coaches and, and GMs and all that. So I feel like just <clears throat> I feel like just finding a common ground, um, being on the same page, being, you know, having open communication is the key to everything. And just in, that's just in life in general. I feel like a lot of people nowadays, you can see Deshaun Watson off the bat, he took a lot of slack and a lot of heat and a lot of this because one, you know, one statement that was said by one guy, then the media takes it and twists it. And, you know, there's a lot of turns and everything like that. But, you know, a lot of communication nowadays is not face to face yeah. and it's not dealt with. And I feel like that's how things get twisted in the media. So, you know, seeing the league go in that direction, you know, I'm not surprised at all. Um, but I just feel like communication in general is, you know, the key to everything. Yeah, so much in today's generation, you now have Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you know, all of that. Back 
back in, when I was in high school and college, we just had MySpace. That was it. Yeah. And I, and I think Facebook, <laughs> Those are the days. you know, in, in my later years in college. But yeah, it, yeah, I think that definitely is one of the uh, key components right now is just the communication or should I say lack thereof. And then that mm -hmm. always causes a misunderstanding. So uh, it's definitely a new time. It's definitely a new league that you guys are now playing and where players now have a much louder voice, a bigger voice, and are willing to use just that. All right, Max. Appreciate you being on. I got a few rapid questions. You can go ahead and just fire them all off. Yeah, I got all you. Right. Here we go. Greatest athlete of all time. Brady, MJ, or LeBron? MJ. MJ. I like it. A, a part of me thought you were going to choose LeBron. There's a part no. of me thought you were going to choose that, but I no, love that. No. MJ, six no for way. six. I think six for six, you can't beat that. Can't beat it. Okay, now, is a hamburger a sandwich yes i would say so <laughs> i would say okay i guess <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay i like that all right last one pre-game soundtrack Ooh, i got at least a hundred songs so okay i you know young thug future um some slower r&b some throwback stuff um I could go on and on, but I got, you know, you know, some Post Malone in there too. So for me, it just, it's got to feel right. If I feel the song in that mood in that city, if it feels right for me, I'm going to play it, you know, for every single game, you know, I got a, a different track, a track list and songs I listen to. Nice. Last one. Favorite stadium to play in so far. That's, that's not, that's not Allegiant Stadium or the uh, Oakland Coliseum. I was about to say Oakland Coliseum. Um, favorite, ooh, that's tough. Um, I would say I like playing in Denver a lot. Same here. I like Same playing here. in Denver. Yeah, that mile high is, is awesome. Definitely, man. I love, uh, love playing. They had so many great memories. Oh, um, yeah. Man, once again, Max, appreciate you coming on, my man. Uh, we definitely got to do this again. Much love to you. Anything you need, man, just go ahead, hit me up. And uh, definitely wishing you much success and that speedy recovery, man. I know you're going to be right back for OTAs and off-season workouts and all that. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me on. It was long overdue, so we'll, we'll it, definitely man. do it again. Keep doing your thing, man. Always rooting for you. All right, brother. Appreciate right. you. Yes, sir.